Here are all the things you need to know if you want to start a Poshmark and sell on one. So I don't currently sell on Poshmark. However, I started my whole re like online reselling journey on Poshmark when I was in high school and I'm 25 now. So it's been probably 10 years. I think I started when I was like 15 or 16 and I like half lived on selling on Poshmark when I was like 19 years old when I lived in Portland. And yeah, I was going to the bins before the bins were super popular and everyone thought it was gross, but I was making like a decent amount of money and I was using it to live and it was all because of Poshmark. So here are my steps on how to get the app and like get familiar with it and sell on Poshmark and be successful doing it. So tip one is to obviously download the app and create an account. Um, it's fairly straightforward. It cues you while you're doing it. So it's pretty self-explanatory. Just get the app. And then I would say to just spend the first few days like messing around with the app, figuring out what different things do, go to different people's profiles and look at theirs to see, you know, how they word their listings and, you know, just get a feel for it. Um, it'll help you a lot more when you get to the like listing stage. It'll help to kind of know what people are looking at, what more people are doing, and it'll just give you some extra ideas on what to do and what to say in your listings. Next, I would say to definitely, I would say to connect your socials. Um, this is a great way if you want to like share your listings on like Facebook or Pinterest. Um, I think you can even do it on Instagram now. Um, but yeah, it's just more ways for your posts to get engagement, which is great. You want as much engagement as you can possibly have. And you're also going to want to update your meet the posher. This is just so that people can like get to know who you are, you know, and like it just makes it more of like a special kind of thing instead of just like a random person selling online. And then with that, just like update your profile picture and yeah. Then you're going to want to make sure that you go into your seller tools and set up your discounts. If you want to have discounts, you can do like 20% off of like three or more items or they have all sorts of different variations you can do. So I would suggest setting up some form of discounts because I know that the more listings you have, the more people are going to look at. And if you offer a discount like, oh, you get 20% off your entire purchase or your entire bundle if you buy like four or more things, people are going to be more likely to try to find four or more things that they can purchase and that's more sales for you and more money in the long run. And then you can start listing. So at this stage, I would say to just take as many pictures as you can. For each listing, you can have up to 17 pictures, which is a lot more than Depop. Depop, you can only have four and one video. Poshmark, you can have 17. So that's a lot. I would do as much detail as you can. Maybe post the tag post the tag that says like what the fabrics are. This is just all going to help alleviate the amount of questions people have later. Um, Cause I know a lot of times people like won't put the measurements of their items in their descriptions, which is just, it's going to waste you a lot of time later when you have like 20 different people asking. So I would just do all of it in there. Be as descriptive as you possibly can. And I know a lot of people even like actually take a picture of the measurement like on like on the item. So that might be a smart thing to do. And I mean, you have up to 17 pictures you can do, so might as well. Okay, so I'm going to do a little overview on how to do a listing. So you just click sell and then go through and pick the pictures that you want. And then you can adjust them here. In the crop section and then select the cover shot this is going to be the picture that everybody sees and you can edit if you want but i really don't and then under details that first box there the title you're just going to want to go ahead and put what they are um, try to be as descriptive as possible here and you know i would i wouldn't do like size or anything here yet because you can do that in the next box but just say what they are and then in the next box you're going to talk about the item like be more descriptive about it tell people what it is what features it has um the color 
This is where you could put the size. I would put your measurements here. Um, if you're doing bottoms, you do like the waist measurement and then you do the rise and the inseam and the hip measurement typically. And then for tops, you do like pit to pit, sleeve length, total length, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, just be super descriptive here. Um, yeah, like I said, talk about the features. Also, this is a great time to m remind people that you're comfortable with them asking questions and they can definitely make uh, offers. This will um, help empower people to do that. And then you just want to make sure you select the categories. So these are women's shorts. Um, and then again, be as descriptive as possible because this will help you later. Quantity one, make sure you do the size correctly. Definitely put the brand in and the color. This will help people find your items easier. Style tags, definitely put the style tags in. Um, this is like hashtags on Depop, so just helps group your items into certain categories. Then you can put the original price. This helps show people what kind of discount they're gonna get. Um, yeah, and I always go for the highest suggested price. And yeah, and then you can go ahead and list it. So after this, after you start like getting listings and everything, you can actually share your listings to like posh parties, which is a really, you know, good way to get your listings out there. They always do random parties like branded ones. They'll have like coach parties or Louis Vuitton parties or they'll have like women's petite parties or, you know, they, they always have something new every day and they have like multiple parties every day. So you're going to want to share your listings to those as much as you can. And also, I suggest people reshare their listings every single day. So you're just going to go in and there's like this little like two arrows button <laughs> and you're going to push that and reshare your listings every day because it helps like pick your items up in the algorithm and yeah you, your items can just get a lot further the more you repost them it also helps you with this thing called posh ambassador status so you have to hit a certain amount of goals to get the status and you can check that out in the i think it's under posh tools and then under that you can see ambassador status so yeah, you just have to hit all these different categories to get there and it takes a while like you have to be in the app really focusing on it for quite a while um one thing you can do is you can start sharing other people's posts that helps you get to ambassador status and it also helps you like get followers faster the more the more you repost the more people you follow and like their posts they're going to want to come and follow you all right now down to the nitty-gritty of fees this is always a question that people have and in my honest opinion Poshmark is like the worst with fees um they just have the highest fees in my opinion so all sales under 15 USD Poshmark takes a two dollars and 95 cent flat rate cut which is like okay if you're selling something for like 14 dollars but then if you have a sale that's 15 dollars or over Poshmark takes 20 percent that's like a pretty big cut Depop only takes 10 so I mean it they Poshmark does have a pretty like user-friendly versatile app and all of their shipping labels are USPS priority labels which makes it a little easier then you don't have to find your own packaging you can just use the ones provided by the United States Postal Service but you kind of have to weigh your pros and cons there and it's different for everybody whatever your preferences are and then for shipping the buyer usually pays for the shipping unless you offer them a discounted shipping price um, this is something you can do when people like your posts you can offer to everybody who's like the post a discount and in there you can do a discounted shipping price as well or you can do free shipping if you'd like. Poshmark also provides free credit card processing so you don't get feed any of that. They cover the cost of that and then for sales tax you provide that. Um, it's automatically calculated into the sale and that number just comes out with the amount that the buyer pays you. So, so there are a lot of perks to Poshmark just with the whole community of it. Um, 
it's a lot easier to get your items shared out and put out and it's easier to offer things to the people who've liked your listings. On Depop, you can't really make an offer to people who like items. Only people who want to make an offer on your item can do that. So it works both ways on Poshmark. On Depop, it's only one way. So that's a nice feature that Poshmark has. They also are like always moving on Poshmark. People are always like reposting things. There's always parties going on. It's a really big community thing on there. So that's also a perk of Poshmark. One thing that I would say is the things that sell on Poshmark, I feel like are a lot different than the things that sell on Depop. Poshmark's a lot more like new things, um, name brands, a lot of stuff like that. Whereas on Depop, I feel like a lot more of Depop is... I'm not saying those things don't sell on Depop, just a lot more of the things on Depop are like vintage or reworked items. You know, it's really for like the style and not for the name. So yeah, I mean, you can be selling on both. I would not cross list. If you cross list, you run the risk of being kicked off of both apps. So I know Depop is pretty strict about that. I'm pretty sure Poshmark is pretty strict about it too. So I'd be careful if you're going to cross list. I would not recommend doing it. I would not suggest that to anybody because it would suck if you got really far and, you know, like you became a top seller on Depop and then like a Posh ambassador and then you lost it all because you were cross listing. So yeah, I would just separate like your vintage and like stylized items to go on Depop and then like name brand and new with tag things to go on Poshmark and that's a good way to do it. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, definitely feel free to leave them down below. I'll go ahead and link my Depop down in the description box so that you can check that out if you'd like and I hope you guys have a good rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!